Hey everybody, welcome back. So in the last few videos, we've been working really hard to clean up our messy World Bank data and we're almost done. The last step we have to take is to transform these variable names into snake case. And to do that, I'm gonna show you a really cool function uh, called the clean names function from the janitor package. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And we can start a new section in our Quarto document and we can call it uh, cleaning variable names, add some text here as a last step we will clean up our variable names so that they are in snake case using the clean names function from the back tick, back tick janitor package. All right. And we'll go ahead and add a code chunk. And we can label our code chunk, whatever we like. But uh, let's call it something like clean names. And um, here we are going to apply clean names to World Bank data. Okay, store in new data frame called World Bank data clean. So we're going to create a new data frame called World Bank underscore data underscore clean or WB underscore data underscore clean. And we're going to create that by modifying our WB underscore data data frame. And the only thing we're going to do here is apply the clean names function. But before we do that, actually, I missed one step here. So we want to go back up and we want to load the janitor package before we do anything, because otherwise this function won't work. So let's call um, library and janitor package and you should have this installed as per the pre-work plan for this lesson um, so first step is to load the janitor package and then we're just going to apply the clean names function to our world bank data right and that should give us some nice clean names one additional step I'd like to take here is to show you how to write this back into a CSV file that we that can then use in subsequent analysis uh, or send to people if they want things in a in a CSV format. So let's write the World Bank data clean data frame to a CSV file. And we're going to do that with the write CSV function from the read R package. And uh, we have to identify first uh, parameter here is what uh, data frame do you want to write to CSV. And then you have to give the path and the file name of where you want to store this. So we're going to put this in our data folder here in our uh, modules project folder so data forward slash WB and we can call it the same thing underscore data underscore clean dot CSV okay and then the last thing is we want to view the data just to make sure everything came out okay so we'll go ahead and view WB underscore data underscore clean and uh, I'm instinctively saving this as we go along, as you should too, uh, hitting Control S or Command S along the way. All right, and um, that all looks right. Let's run it and see if everything works. Okay, and yep, look, we didn't even have to specify what names we wanted for these variables. The clean names function just took care of it for us. So it turned country space name, which was in title case, 
into snake case and then replace the space with an underscore for us. Um, same thing with country code, series name, series code, right? Um, automatically. So that's a really cool and useful function uh, for wrangling data. All right, and then uh, let's look here in our folder, our data folder, and make sure that our new CSV file is there. There you go, wb underscore data underscore clean dot CSV. And if we went into, um, you know, Excel um, or some other program that would read the CSV file for us or show us a CSV file, um, we would see uh, essentially something that looks like this, right? Our data in long form. Uh, all of the variable names in snake case and year and female labor force participation rate variables in numeric format, everything else as a character variable. Uh, it should show us something like that. Okay, and then as a final step, guys, let's go ahead and just uh, render this so that we can look at the final HTML document and uh, and that's what it looks like. And again, remember that is the point of Quarto is to integrate our text and our code. Um, so it's always good at the end, you know, of any exercise to go ahead and render the document and see what the either HTML or PDF document looks like. So that is it for module 1.1. In the next module, we're gonna talk about how to download data from an API um, so that, and packages that allow you to do that so that you don't have to spend necessarily all of this time cleaning up messy CSV files. Sometimes you have to do that. It's unavoidable. That's the only format that you can get the data in, but there are lots of really cool data sets that are available via APIs and there are lots of cool packages that are available to help you extract those data and use those data. And so that's what we're going to talk about next. I'll see you there.